Welcome to the 2024 Nippon Professional Baseball Preview and Predictions Show. This is Yuri, aka the Yaku Cosmopolitan, and today I'm joined by a couple of very special guests from the English MPB community. It's Evan, aka Gaijin Baseball, and Lucas Borja, not Bora. I had that wrong for many years, but here we are to give our thoughts on each of the 12 teams going into the season. I am in Japan, Gaijin Baseball is in Canada. And Lucas is in Portugal. Uh, so we're managing three different time zones here, literally across the world. Uh, so I think that's pretty impressive. But before we begin, let me ask, how are you guys doing and how are you feeling as we're just over a week now from the start of a new season? Uh, I'm doing good and I'm feeling really excited. It's just finally that time again. Like, Because for the last four months or so, it's been a lot of uh <laughs> digging into history trying to find little clips and keeping myself uh pinned to the ground for news but uh, as of right now we can stop with the speculation and actually get to the games and i think that's beautiful yeah it's gonna be another really exciting season um uh, i can't wait to discuss it with you guys uh i've been listening to both of you guys channels for who knows how long since the be- the the beginning and yeah it's it's gonna be fun gonna be fine yeah uh i'm in the same boat as you guys like with baseball there's never really an off season right because there's so much like winter ball going on and we have to keep up with the off season but at the same time like nothing beats a a brand new season so um let's you know get right into it with the uh nippon ham fighters because we're going to go in reverse order of last year's standings and we're going to begin with the pacific league so uh, this is a team that has finished uh, in the bottom two of the, of the Pacific League for five straight years. So the last time we saw them in the playoffs was 2018, which was literally just one year after Shohei Otani left the team. So it has been a long, long time when you look at it like that. But they are starting to come out of a rebuild with a nice young core, and manager Chiyoshi Shinjo has stated that He has some pretty high aspirations for this team, so it's basically playoffs or bust. And boy, did they have themselves an offseason. They were the most active team in MPB over the winter by far. So, Gaijin Baseball, let's start with you. What do you make of this team's offseason moves? Are there any particular players that uh, you you really like? I'm uh, pretty high on Andrew Stevenson, personally. Uh, We all know Fran Reyes is like the the typical... uh, guy npb teams target stevenson's a little different he's more of a defense first guy he really makes that outfield like just a vacuum cleaner uh with with him with go matsumoto and shusei manami like this team is going to have some great outfield defense which kind of makes up for some lacking parts of their infield defense that we saw last year um i'm also excited to see drew verhagen back um, uh, you know, he struggled a bit in MLB, but he was great, uh, in his first two years in Hokkaido. Oh, granted that was at the Sapporo Dome and not at Escon Field. So we'll see how he adjusts and it was also years ago and things can change year over year, uh, as we've seen. But I think that, um, the fighters had a very good off season and it does really put them back in the hunt. Yeah, definitely. How about you, Lucas? Uh, yeah, I see the fighters as like a team that that's that's on the uprise. Clearly, they they've been trying some things over the last few years, trying guys in different positions, and yeah, this offseason they they really went out and got some like actual proven talent in Verhagen, some a different flavor of a foreigner in Stevenson, a guy that can hit for average, can steal bases, can potentially be their leadoff hitter. And and yeah, and of course, Fernando Reyes, thirty plus homer and power, so they can have a pretty deep lineup. They had a Sachi Yamasaki from the Buffaloes, so the rotation's looking pretty deep as well. And yeah, last year they they weren't even really that bad when you look at run differential. They were just they they were just minus thirty two runs, which is not that bad when you compare to other last place teams like. Uh, the dragons when we'll talk about them and yeah i think there is reason for big time optimism in hokkaido 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you guys. Like, this team made so many moves that they couldn't have possibly gone wrong. Like, they tried a little bit of everything, uh, as you guys mentioned, with bringing back Drew Hagen, which kind of makes up for the loss of Naoyuki Uesawa, who is on the Tampa Bay Rays now on a minor league deal. Uh, and, you know, they also added, like, a flamethrower like Anwar Zabala, a guy who can throw 100, not much command, but, you know, an interesting piece to throw into that bullpen, which was, you know, a bit of a weakness for them last year. Uh, they drafted Haruki Hosono, who I am very high on myself. He throws very hard, uh, power lefty there. Um, and yeah, it, when it comes to Stevenson, I think he is performing very well in spring. Fran Mulray is not so much. We'll see what happens when we get into the regular season. But yeah, I mean, Reyes is somebody who profiles pretty similarly to Domingo Santana. When you look at their MLB resumes, like Reyes is a little bit uh, less patient, but he has you know just as much, if not more, raw power. Um, and it, it is really difficult, especially with the dead balls now, to kind of predict how foreigners are going to perform. But just in terms of name value, like Fran Mel Ray is, is a guy that was hitting almost 40 home runs at MLB just not too long ago. So, yeah, I think the fighters had themselves a very, very good offseason. They definitely added more than they subtracted, which brings us to um, kind of their, their, their lineup. And I think their lineup is not too shabby at all, but it is still going to come down to how many of their young guys can step up, right? Because they do have veterans like Go Matsumoto, who won the batting title two years ago. Um, but the rest of this team is pretty much all young. That's not to say they're not talented. They are full of talent. Chusei Manami won the SIS Baseball Defensive Player of the Year last year. He almost won the home run title. I love Chusei Manami. Everyone knows that. Kotaro Kiyomiya has started to show signs of breaking out. He was injured early last year. But, you know, if everything clicks for him, he's a 30-homer guy. Ariel Martinez coming over from uh, the Chinichi Dragons because he didn't have any playing time there. Uh, he's a really nice bat. And if they're going to play him behind the plate a little more this season... That makes them, you know, really strong at a premium position. Uh, and then they have, you know, up the middle, Taiki Narama and Daigo Kamigawa Bata are two very inexperienced guys. I think that is going to be one of their weaknesses, probably. But you never know. Like, if one of these guys steps up, then that could com completely change the complexion of this team. What do you guys think? I think it's a question of whether or not last year was a fluke for Kamikawa Bata because he was really good in 2022 and then last year just went, you know, that was, yeah, it was, it was a sh very sudden drop off. Uh, of course, you have Gosuke Kato uh, sitting back at second base and he's got a little bit more job security considering uh, he doesn't count as a foreign player. Um, so... I think Kato can play decent. There were some concerns about his defense last year. Uh, according to uh, Delta Graphs, they didn't rate him particularly highly, something that uh, actually pretty shocked uh, Ghost Game himself when he reached out to me, kind of asking, like, yo, where was I, you know, last year? And um, I think they have options up the middle, but getting that playing time is definitely going to be a, um, a big thing for them. Uh, Yuki Nomura at first base is very interesting. I don't know if I like him at third base uh, at first base over him being at third base and swapping him in Kotaro Kiyomiya. But um, regardless of the corners, they're fine. I think I think James is uh, is a little bit like he's a little bit of an underrated player. I think he's primed for a breakout as well as Kiyomiya. Um, Taiki Nirama is just a complete question mark and we, we don't, yeah, like the, the weakest part of this fighters team is up the middle and that's pretty widely known. Yeah. And there's, there's really no doubt that they don't have really proven guys up the middle. I mean, Kan Kawabata, he showed something, uh, I think two years back, but it's been tough. Gosuke Kato, uh, it's great. He doesn't count as a foreigner, but he had, he had his hot streaks last year. But overall, this lineup's just really interesting. I mean, 
can we finally see um, Kotaro Kiyomiya take, take that step forward? Last year he said he was going to hit 40 bombs. Well, let's see it. Let's see at least 25 first. Uh, Go Matsumoto, he had, he had a big time season a couple of years back. He's followed, he's followed back a little bit, but he's still a player that can set up the lineup at the top. Manami broke out last year. 25 bombs, elite defense. My, my MLB comparison to him is... It's a bit lofty, but it's Aaron Judge, like, eventually. <laughs> on, on an NPB scale, of course, but... Oh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I want to see more Ariel Martinez behind the plate. I think he's got a lot of potential there. He, he needs more playing time. They got him 400-something player appearances last year. I, I, need, I need to see more. And, yeah, overall, it's, it's a really interesting team. It's just full of guys ready to prove themselves themselves again and yeah they could be dangerous in the Pacific League. Yeah definitely and Kiyomiya being at third base I agree is a bit odd but I think Shinjo has really wanted that ever since he took over because he kept on you know telling Kiyomiya you need to lose weight you need to lose weight and I think the big reason for that was because he wanted Kiyomiya to have this sort of added mobility and athleticism to where he can play third and probably you know, increase his value because he has such high expectations for Kiyomiya. Now, defensively, he rates very poorly right now. But um, if you look at some of those, like, scoops he's done, snags on throws from Manami over at third base, he's, he's done, he does a pretty good job. So I think he has the skill set there to improve. Um, and yeah, this lineup is going to be exciting. They definitely have the pieces to succeed. It's just about whether or not these guys can actually deliver. Moving on to the pitching. Uh, as we mentioned, they lost Nelyuki Uesawa, who was kind of the you know veteran ace, or at least the number two for this team for a long time. But they still have Hiromi Ito at the top, Takayuki Kato, the 85 mile per hour machine who just pounds the zone and just keeps getting good results. Shoma Kanemura, uh, a young breakout candidate who was great last year in a very small sample size. He's apparently going to start the year in the bullpen, but I really expect him to climb back into uh, the rotation eventually. We mentioned Drew Verhagen. They signed Sacha Yamasaki uh, as, you know, kind of a, a finesse lefty to raise the floor of this rotation. Horika Nemato is a young uh, pitcher that has shown a lot of promise, especially in the few chances he's been afforded on the national level. He was great um this past week uh exhibition series versus europe and he was also really really good at the asia pro baseball championship back in november they have some other guys there as well kenta uehara was actually surprisingly good last year uh patrick murphy koki kitayama who has kind of uh changed up his mechanics to mimic yoshinobu yamamoto over the offseason i saw he was throwing a lot harder what do you guys think about this team's rotation I think there's like it, it's it's solid, but it's unremarkable. That's that's the like the biggest thing holding the fighters back for these past few years has been the back end of the rotation. I think they did figure out a little bit more to kind of bring it up to snuff. Uh, but starting a guy like Kenya Suzuki regularly was not the best, uh, especially when it comes to. You know, sidearms, submariners, and guys like that. They're good in fits and starts, but in order to be an effective submarine starter, you have to be elite, and you have to be able to get really good movement. I don't think Kenya quite has that. Uh, Koki Kitayama's been okay, but nothing nothing um, extraordinary. Kenta Uehara, same deal. And shuffling up this, this rotation could be a good thing, but it also could really step them back because a lot of guys are like may not be happy to get dropped when they feel they don't deserve to be dropped from it or you know some guys may not take the pressure of it of it well so top a, a top two of ito and kato that's great it's everything else that's a question mark for me yeah um this uh pitching away a change joel likes it that he at our bits um, difference from the conventional and yeah have, have, um, have you guys seen um, 
their newest acquisition, uh, Takumi Yamamoto, who's 5'5", five, five, and, he, and he's throwing 97. Like, that's exciting. But I'm not totally sold on this pitching staff. Yeah, my whole thing with the fighters is that they're not they're not great in this rotation, but I do think they raise the floor significantly by adding you know guys like Verhagen and Yamasaki. I think Kitayama is going to be better. I love Hosano. I don't know if he's going to make much of an impact this year, but I think top to bottom they're just good enough to where if the bats can deliver, they're going to be able to compete. Um, and you know we don't need to spend too much time on the bullpen, but. Seiji Tanaka, you know, finally was able to break out last year. Very inspiring story, obviously, because he was basically a bust with the Soft Bank Hawks, comes over in the Roll 5 draft, and was actually a pretty, uh, I wouldn't say dominant, but he was a very adequate closer for them. Uh, Naoya Ishikawa was hurt for uh, a large chunk of 2023. We'll see if he can bounce back. We mentioned Tatumi Yamamoto, we mentioned Anwar Zavala earlier veteran uh, Naoki Miyanishi still going. This is a bullpen that doesn't really have too many names that stand out, but uh, do you guys think that this bullpen can improve? I think there is improvement to be had. Um, I'm I'm very interested to see how Takami Yamamoto goes out over the season because he just sounds like a Tommy John candidate waiting to happen. Throws way too hard for his, for his height. But, hey, um... I think that, like, I, I wouldn't sleep on this bullpen, but it's not one of the best in the league. And that's probably where it sits. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have uh, true, like, marquee guys that most other teams have. Uh, neither closing nor setting up. It, it's it's just a bunch of guys that they can get out, but uh, are you quite sure that you can get them at an elite rate with elite stuff, and I'm not quite there yet. Right, so we've gone through, you know, top to bottom of this team. Where are we thinking they finish? Because personally, uh, I predicted them to finish in third place last year, and that ended up being premature. I mean, we obviously finished in last place, but if you look past a couple of really bad stretches, they had like April, they were terrible, and then in uh, July, they just had, you know, just this enormous losing streak. If you look past those horrible stretches, they were pretty competitive for the rest of the year. So I'm thinking if these young bats continue to improve, uh, the pitching gets just 5% better, I think this team can finish in third place. So that's where I have them. I have the fighters finally making it back to the playoffs. How about you guys? I have them as a fringe playoff contender, either third or fourth. It really uh, kind of depends on uh, what the Marines and the Lions do. Yeah, uh, I have them fourth. Um, I'm not quite there yet for the playoffs. I think that they'll be really close. They'll finally be competitive this year. But I think it's still a big, big step to climb from being a perennial loser to just being a playoff team, especially in a competitive PL. Right. The Cebu Lions are the next team. They finished in fifth place last year, and they aren't expected to do much better this season, at least on paper. But this is a team that has built up a very formidable starting rotation in recent years, which is interesting because that's been such a weakness for them, even when they were good in the late 2010s. Um, and they had one of the best offenses of all time. Their starting rotation was pretty bad, but now... I mean, they have the, the makings of one of the best rotations in MPB. So I think we have to take them seriously to some extent. Um, and I would say they had a pretty interesting offseason. So do you guys like these players the Lions brought in? I like Jesus Aguilar, but um, and bringing back uh, Ginjura Sumitani. Uh, Albert Abreu is an interesting pickup. But as for Jeffrey Yan and Franchi Cordero, I'm just not not seeing the vision, quite frankly. I do see I do see the vision behind grabbing Franchi Cordero, which is big man hit ball hard, but big man cannot cannot uh, cannot make contact with ball, therefore he cannot hit ball hard. And and Jeffrey Yan, uh, we we've already seen recently his overconfidence get a little bit the best of him on multiple occasions, uh, and I feel that he's gonna he's gonna not do so well. I, I'd rather see Abreu pitching out of the bullpen than Yan. 
Yeah, um, I think Abreu was a quality add to the bullpen. Uh, Aguilar, uh, he's been good in the past. He's a bit, he's a bit on the older side of what most foreigners age tend to be when they come to Japan. But I think he still has some power, and he's not a total dud when it comes to like making contact as well. When it comes to Frenchy Cordero, yeah, big man does not hit the ball much. He hits the ball hard. He's bounced around a few teams in the MLB. And about Jeffrey Yan, yeah, he, he just has to keep his feet on the ground after after throwing the pitch. It, it's, it's just about it. Especially when they can hit it. I mean, I love the celebrations. I think he's going to be better than you think, Kevin. But yeah, he's got to figure that out for sure. Yeah, Jeffrey Yan is a pitching ninja favorite. Uh, I, I love any player that shows as much emotion as he does because he's going to get eyes on MPB. He is. Like, if he's on Pitching Ninja, he's going to have, you know, thousands of people watching him. But, you know, is bro Mark Fiedrich? Is bro Brad Leslie? That's, he has to prove that, right? And um, I, I really like that they brought in Hiroshi Kaino as compensation for losing Hotaka Yamakawa. Um, Kaino is a guy who consistently ranks in like top five in terms of average velo. He's a guy that can easily pump high 90s. Uh, he doesn't quite have the best shape on his fastball, but uh, so, so, so he gets hit around a little more than you would expect, but pretty good secondary. So I think Kaino could uh, slot in and be this team's closer and be pretty successful. And then Natsuki Takeuchi, their first round draft pick, who ended up being uh, the most contested pitcher of the 2023 draft. Very polished, and he really rounds out a very strong rotation. Uh, so let's actually start with the rotation this time, because, man, Kona Takahashi, who has you know MLB aspirations, he's put up a, a 2-2-0 ERA now in two straight seasons. Kaima Tyra, I think he's a top-five pitcher in MPB. Plus, he added a gyro slider over the offseason. Tyra works so hard. He's so cerebral. He knows how to, you know, perfectly fine tune little aspects of his game. Kaima Tyra is like honestly a sleeper Salomura contender. Katsuya Imai, I saw him earlier this spring throwing like 98. So, you know, I, I know people say he's the Japanese Blake Snell, but even with that kind of shaky command, with the stuff he has, he is a tough pitcher to face. Chihiro Sumida, I love Chihiro Sumida. Um, I really was inspired by his story because people were knocking him so hard when he went 1-10 in, in his rookie season, even though that's because he has no run support. Hello. And uh, his stuff is just great. I mean, I think he's already one of the top five southpaws in MPB, and his underlying numbers are fantastic. And then as we mentioned with uh, Takeuchi, I don't care who the number six guy is. It can be Matsumoto. It can be the submarine or Yoza, it can be Bo Takahashi who's getting stretched out. I think this rotation is great. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, uh, this rotation is stacked top to bottom. Uh, people say Kona Takahashi is the ace. No, it's Tyra now. Uh, the only man, uh, I, be I believe Tyra was tied for the most quality starts in NPB with uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Like, he was right up there just pitching game after game after game after game. I think he only had. Of his 23 starts, 18 were quality. Um, the guy just has uh, an absolute, like, in like in a commanding presence on the mound, which I feel like the the cerebral, uh, you know, psychological aspect of that. I, I, it, it's less, it's harder to quantify, but he is a very intimidating pitcher. He'll go right after you, uh, and he he won't back down when he even when he's down in the count, which is something that I think really really helps him uh sumida is going to take that step forward uh, i mean we, we saw in his preseason start against the hawks he's already in mid-season form uh and and it's it's going to be very scary uh takeuchi i'm actually fairly high on it's the question of that last rotation spot uh, whether that goes to watara matsumoto or kaito yoza uh, I know that Lions fans think very highly of Wataru Matsumoto. I'm less convinced that the the um, you know peripheral numbers just aren't there. Yoza has a similar problem, but Yoza has that that um, 
you know, aught delivery when it comes to his submarine thing. Like, once again, similar problems to Kenya Suzuki, but I think he can make it work if he if he gets the right, um, the right, facing the right team. It's like a very situational thing with him. Um, and, of course, there's Bo Takahashi, who's, you can flip between, I think he's more of a bullpen piece, but um, he can definitely jump into that rotation should they need him. I like I, I don't think it would be it would be uppity to say that the Lions have the best rotation in NPB. I, I don't think that's that's out of the question. How about you, Lucas? Uh Seven's rotation is definitely one of the probably deepest in the NPB and I th- I think they might just be the best. Um when you look at Kona Takahashi, though he might not be the ace with Tyra, uh he has MLB aspirations. He has to be posted uh, last year. He's going to try to prove himself this year. He had a 2.20 ERA. Uh, Tyra uh, converted from one one of the best setup men in the league into one of the best starters in the league. I, I rate him as probably a top five pitcher in NPB. He's throwing hard. He fills up the zone. And I, I think he's going to get a bigger work workload this year as he adjusts to being a star. Uh, when you look at Chihiro Sumida, he, he was a uh, prized, prized uh, draft pick a couple years back. Uh, as you said, Yuri, uh, he was criticized for having a bad win-loss record because, of course, it's NPB, they're going to do that. But uh, yeah, I think he's just on the verge of breaking out and I think this might just be his year uh, his curveball grade as one of the best pitches in NPB last year even ahead of Yoshinobu Yamamoto's curveball and yeah the, the back of the rotation is actually quite solid as well Natsuki Takeuchi was another high draft pick where they probably probably should have taken a hitter but they went rotation again uh, to solidify his strength, and it'll probably pay off quite all right. And uh, my Portuguese-speaking brother, Bo Takahashi from Brazil, uh, he was good out of the bullpen last year, and who knows? He he might be really good this year. Also, uh, Shinosuke Hade, um, I know you're really high on him, Yuri. And yeah, do you think he, he can crack the rotation this year? Yeah, Shinosuke Hada, my number four overall ranked prospect in MPB at this point. Probably not going to crack the rotation this year, but I wouldn't be shocked if he gets some opportunities either late in the year, maybe one or two starts. 2025, though, is when I really think this guy is going to break out at the MPB level. Also, Chihiro Sumida, I liked him a lot before, but then he just followed me on Twitter last week, so I like him even more now. Uh, but yeah, that changes. Yes, that changes the whole picture because he inflates my ego. But let's talk about the bullpen. Bullpen last year, they didn't have many guys that throw hard, apart from Jesus Tinoco, mostly because Kaima Tyra moved into the rotation. But now they meant they added the aforementioned. Hiroshi Kaino, Albert Abreu throws hard. Uh, Taishi Mamida is a guy who showed some promise in a small sample last year. Maybe he can be a sneaky rookie of the year candidate since MPB loves to, you know, give that award to relievers. Uh, Shinsuke Sato, same draft class as uh, Sumida. You know, he's been stuck in the rotation for for a little bit, so maybe he uh, finds his groove. What do you guys think about this team's? bullpen i i I like the like the fighters solid but unremarkable um i think kaino will step into a a late reliever role i could see uh albert abreu you know in in a high leverage situation uh not quite a closer because i don't think uh i don't think he's built for that jeffrey yan i i know yeah i know i'm not high on jeffrey yan but like like I think he could be a low leverage arm. Uh, quite frankly, it would be really funny to see him like pull up that K strut when the lines are either up big or down big, and he gets out of an inning. <laughs> uh, that would be really funny. Uh, but I I think this this bullpen like you know 
it, it, it did suffer a loss having Tyra move out of the closer role, but I think it has built itself up to being respectable. It's not it's not awful, but it's not like gonna blow you away. You know, it's not quite the Buffaloes of 2022. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the problem is having Tyra in the rotation is that you don't have him on on the bullpen, and yeah, I think that was a huge loss. Yeah. Not having that dominant presence to just like ha- uh, for your closers to have a- an easier time in the ninth, I think it really cost them last year. Even though we all think of them as a good pitching team, uh, they actually finished last in FIP minus in the Pacific League, and the bullpen also finished um, pr- pretty below average. Actually, uh, who who they got? They got they got Kaino uh, from SoftBank, which I think it was a bit of a mistake for SoftBank to to let him go for Yamakawa. Remember when we thought they were gonna get Wada? Oh man, that was crazy. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. Yeah, it's just a forty-two-year-old just ch- changing teams I, after. It, 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 it was it was a dangle to get a guy like Kaino. It was basically no, please don't take him. Please don't piss off one of our like longest-running <laughs> players. Yeah. Oh uh, right, right. I mean, I th- I think they they did it right by the end. I think Kaino is more valuable than than Wada yeah. in the long run. But. Ooh. But yeah, I think the the downfall of Tatsushi Masuda last year was also a big a big issue for them. They they lost a guy that that was closing games, and yeah, he's gonna have to bounce back a bit because I I don't see many elite names here that uh, that can carry this bullpen. Yeah, the main problem with this bullpen is they're not getting many strikeouts, but. I think they can probably mitigate that just a little bit because their defense is very strong, especially up the middle. And speaking of which, let's talk about this team's hitting because for as good as the pitching is, this team's hitting looks pretty atrocious at times. Um, However, there are some pieces I like, like Shuki Konosaki, great bounce back season last year after a couple of down years. Sosuke Genda was hurt, you know, with a broken finger early on, so I don't really count um, his... I wouldn't even say he had a down year. Like, he did have the worst offensive numbers of his career, but that's not his value anyway. That's not his game. His game is just steal bases and play elite defense. Granted, he didn't steal that many bases either, so we'll see uh, how how that, you know, running component of his game develops as he enters his 30s now. Um, Takia Hiruma is, you know, one of their top prospects who I like. Shinya Hasegawa was putting up good numbers on the farm last year. And then Franchi Cordero, like... That is such a questionable outfield. You don't know if any of those guys are going to give you production. Ryusei Sato at third base, uh, kind of an interesting story because he's hopped around between the fighters and the Lions now multiple times. But he had, you know, almost a 400 on base last year in, you know, like half a season worth of games. He was very disciplined out of nowhere. I don't know if that's going to really stick, especially because he's not a good enough bad he's not a a dangerous enough of a bat for pitchers to really be um throwing outside the zone against him that much but maybe he's just kind of gonna be one of those kind of anomaly type guys but yeah this team's hitting could be really problematic when you have 40 year old Taki and Nakamura still as one of the best hitters right well to be fair Nakamura did put up a 150 WRC plus last year so it's not like he was just good compared to the Lions he was good compared to everyone uh, um, and I, I, I don't think that is repeated <laughs> this year, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I do think Nakamura will be a homer threat. I don't think he quite gets to 500 this year, but he, he should get close enough that they give him one more year because, you know, <laughs> why not? I think that this, this lineup is question marks on question marks on question marks. It's the reason why. Uh, the Lions haven't been that great despite their uh, elite rotation these past couple of years is because, well, the, the lineup hasn't really stepped up. I think that um, they're trying to do uh, a late 90s, early 2000s Lions strategy of having an elite you know, pitcher and a couple good hitters to kind of tide you over. But the issue is, is that... Uh, Neither Franchi Cordero nor Jesus Aguilar are Domingo Martinez. And, um, you know, there's no Kaz Matsui in the lineup of Kaz Matsui's team to kind of lead, lead the vanguard. 
So uh, it, this is this is their their big problem, really. Um, I think we're gonna see more of Kenta Watanabe step up um, the further down the year, depending on how uh, Aguilar does. And uh, I, I don't want to see him playing third. I know he can, but I, I really don't think he should be. I, yeah. I, I don't see this as a playoff lineup. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree with you, Evan. Uh, it's really a shame how much t- talent they have let go over these last few years. Uh, uh, I think we can start with Akiyama. It, it, I know it's been a while, but losing him was, was big. Uh, then they lose Mori to the Buffaloes, and now recently they lose Yamakawa, which is understandable, of course, given the situation, but it just leaves this lineup with a bunch of, honestly, it's not nobodies, but you don't really know who these guys are going to be, aside from Tonasaki and, and Gemba. Uh, I think uh, catchers is a question mark. Uh, Koga was called up to Samurai Japan, uh, recently but I don't have much hope in him uh, Aguilar should split some time with Watanabe and I think that might be a strong strong point uh, This the, the strength in the lineup is with Tonasaki and Gamba and that's mostly on defense and base running uh, yeah it's a lot of question marks Ryusei Sato uh, walked a lot in a very in a limited sample size last year I think that's part of the reason they let David McKinnon go, which I think was a, a clear mistake as he, he was an above average bat. He could play first, he could play first. He was goal, a goal guy. Goal. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was a big loss. And this outfield is just, it's it's just not looking great. I mean, when when I, the Frenchy Cordero is the highest hope I have for your outfield, it, it, it's just not great. And Foreigners, foreigners like him just haven't produced lately. Uh, Shinya Asagawa, Takuya Irumi, these are unproven guys. I know Iruma has a lot to prove. He was a first-round pick. But, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to have to see it. Takuya Nakamura, is, he, he was very good last year. He was very good last year, but how, how can you rely on a 41-year-old to, to be your best hitter? I, I just don't think you can. He'd have to be here at Mitsukata 2.0, and I think he would be, but I don't know if he is. Yeah, especially because he's a little bit, you know, banged up a lot these days. He's not playing every single day. Also, in regards to Koga, uh, he has a very good arm. My my fear is that he is literally the new Taki Akai, because negative 17 defensive run saved last year. Terrible framer, not a great blocker either although young so you can get better yes and i you know echo your sentiment about bringing back sumitani is actually really good because it adds a veteran to this uh carousel that consisted of koga and suge who are very young and inexperienced and also you were mentioning yeah all those superstars that they've lost in the lineup let's also not forget he had Tawasamura, right so like they had oh, such a right. star-studded lineup and now this is really bare bones so Let's wrap up the Lions with where we think they are going to finish. I would say their ceiling is third because the starting rotation is, you know, one of, if not the best in the league. However, the lineup is probably far and away the worst. So you have kind of these two polarizing forces. I have them in fifth, but I don't really feel good about it. Like, I think they could be a little bit higher. I think they could surprise people. How about you guys? I have them in fifth. Um, And... This is a team I like, which which has influenced my decisions before. Um, I I just don't see them being a playoff team. I think that I, I think that in refusing Kona Takahashi's posting request, they are going to try their hardest to do something this year. I don't think they can. Yeah, um, I'm the same as you guys. I have them fifth. Uh, this is a roster that I think. Uh, I thought about having them higher, actually, because the rotation is just that good, but the lineup is, is just so depressing to to even look at. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's just going to be a tough time. Uh, if you see the 
the odds for for the season. Uh, Vegas actually has the Lions pretty pretty high. Actually, they have them as like a French wildcard team ahead of the Fighters, for example. But I I, I really can't be behind that enthusiasm, or wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All right. Next, it's the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles. They had a very bad first couple of months in 2023, but they finished fairly strong and almost snuck into the playoffs at the very end. They needed to win their last game against the Marines, but of course they lost. Um, I think the general consensus is that this team has the worst pitching staff in at least the Pacific League right now. Um, and the fact that it was a bullying scandal involving Tomohiro Unraku and then some very weird confusion around whether or not Nick Turley had signed with a Mexican team. I think the fact that those were like the types of headlines that dominated the Eagles this winter says a lot. So not an easy task for new skipper Toshiaki Imai, although I don't think he could be any worse than Kazunari Ishii. But what do you guys think? What do you make of their offseason? Not good. Uh, you lose your closer and then there's there's rumors that they're trying to force Norimoto into the closer role. Norimoto was their ace forever, you know, for the 2010s. And uh, it, it's shocking how many people don't know that, which really says a lot about how the Eagles have done this past decade. People don't realize just how good uh, Takahiro Norimoto was, especially in the late uh, 2010s. Um, that does not bode well. That means their ace would be Takayuki Kishi, who is old, <laughs> and... Uh, but I think Masahiro Tanaka is going to have a spot in that rotation as long as he wants it. And he, 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 he's good on his good days, but his bad days are really bad. Literally the worst start by uh, James Gamescore this year. Uh, sorry, this past year. Um, I think that adding Cody Ponce does help the situation. But keeping around Michael Franco uh, I, the, the one time they should have re-rolled on hitters they didn't re-roll on hitters which says a lot about the team's direction at this point in time I, I don't think they're trying to win yeah the, the Eagles are they're old they, they have the Anraku situation which is just terrible and he was actually a pretty solid reliever as well they lose Yuki Matsui to the Padres. That's going to be huge. Like, and they replace that with their best pitcher going in a closer when you don't have innings in the rotation to 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 throw around. It, it, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. This team this team can hit. They have some very proven hitters. They they're, but it, it's going to be the same issue as it's been the last few years. It's just that they can't pitch. They can't pitch neither in the rotation nor in the bullpen. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of that hitting, um, you're right. Like, this team's offense is very good, I think. I mean, Toshiki Abe coming over from the Dragons last year, he's kind of the hometown kid. Slow start, but then he really turned it on in the second half. He was one of the better hitters in MPB in the second half. Hidato Asamura making the move from first slash second base over to the hot corner, which is interesting. We don't know how he's going to, you know, play defensively over there, but he is always a candidate to win the home run title. Um, and then in the outfield, you know, Yuya Ogo had a bit of a breakout last year. Rosuke, Rosuke Tatsumi, um, some of his defensive metrics have been falling off, but a really good table setter at the top of that lineup. Shiroaki Shimauchi bad year last year but the two years before that he was like a mid 800s OPS so I think that outfield has a pretty high ceiling um, and I really like Yuma Yasuda behind the plate alongside Hikaru Ota uh, those two can form you know one of the better catching tandems in MPB I think especially when it comes to their offensive upside you, you don't find two catchers with as much you know hitting upside as you do Yasuda and Ota I think uh, but what do you guys make of this Eagles lineup? I think it's solid. It, it, there's there's some holes as with any team, but uh, I think that this Eagles lineup, yeah, the Eagles have been one of the better hitting teams these past few years, and it's clear that they've been trying to ride that offense uh, at times. They did grab Toshiki Abe from the Dragons, which 
really head scratching move from the dragon's point of view because you're giving up one of your good bats. Um, and he he played well. He played a lot better than I thought he would uh, in the second half last year. Uh, it is still Samura at the at the front end of that lineup, and he is he is the guy who everything lit, uh, rides and dies by. But uh, quite frankly, it is sadly one of the better offenses in uh, in the Pacific League. I just don't think the pitching. I, I think the pitching really sinks this team. Quite frankly, as has these past couple of years, whenever they've been a fringe playoff contender. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty funny actually. If you combine uh, the Lions and the Eagles into one team, they're they're, well, they're probably the best team ever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Because Lions dashing Eagles lineup, oof, pennant that that's nasty. Yeah, I mean, it's just such extremes that uh, we don't we don't actually often see that much in NPB. All the teams are pretty much in the balance. They're they're very even. But, but yeah, when you look at this lineup, I mean, it, it's just all of them are mostly proven guys that, that not only have hit, but have like a consistent track record. Uh, Ryosuke Tatsumi is a potential five, five war center fielder. Uh, he's, he could lead off. Uh, Hiroto Kokubat, Kokukatu led the league in stolen bases last year. He's also pretty okay with the bat. Yuya Ogo also broke out last year. Then you got Hideto Asamura, who uh, led the league in homers with uh, Gregory Polanco. And uh, Shima Uchi, uh, he had a bit of a, a, a pretty crappy year last year. He's not going to defend great, but he should hit. Uh, and yet, he had a bad year last year, and he still had a, a positive WRC+. Plus. When, when we go to uh, the lower part of the lineup, it's still solid. Uh, Toshiki Abe was a great great acquisition from the Dragons. Uh, like you guys said, I don't know what they were actually doing, trading one of their best hitters for a 36-year-old star who was pretty washed up. And uh, yeah, I'm higher on Michael uh, than you are, Evan. I think he, he's lost a bit of his mojo when he was with the Phillies. He's, he bounced around a lot. Uh, he he looks a bit uh, I don't know tired at times, and in Philly he was always the most exciting guy on the team, despite not being very good. But I still think he can be a, a very decent player. He's got a lot of power. He actually puts he actually makes a lot of contact on the ball. He's just that if you pitch if you if you pitch him an outside slider, he's gonna ground out to first to first base. That's always been his problem. And yeah, the catching tandem with. Hikaru Wata and Yuma Yasuda, that's two, two, young, two youngish guys that can be really exciting. Uh, Yasuda has more power, he, uh, Ota has a more well-rounded game. And lastly, uh, Murabayashi, he, he's just going to fill the hole at shortstop. And he's going to play solid defense, and who knows, he can be actually a pretty solid hitter as well. So I'm very bullish on this lineup. It's really a shame how... Uh, decrepit the the rotation is yeah and in reference to that Toshiki Abe trade that was a one for one for Hideaki Wakui right and even though Hideaki Wakui is a little bit you know washed now I I feel like they probably regret that because this team could use a Hideaki Wakui in this rotation um like wow this rotation is bad I mean Tagayuki Kishi um, his run prevention is still pretty good, but like the underlying numbers indicate that a pretty big drop off is imminent. And then I'll be the first one to tell you Kosei Shoji and Takahisa Hayakawa are, are very exciting. I watched ha- Hayakawa pitch in Australia over the winter and he looked really impressive there. Shoji has plus stuff. So I'm excited about those two guys' future, but in 2024, I'm not too sure. Masahiro Tanaka, by some metrics, was the worst pitcher in MPB last year. They add Cody Ponce, they draft uh, Tatsuki Koja, you know, they fill out the back of the rotation, but, man, there is just no top-end pitching here. They don't have an ace right now. They, their ace is being forced into um, the bullpen, as we, we've stated multiple times. Like, <laughs> head-scratching. I, I, I do think that 
you know, Masahiro Tanaka still being in the rotation will be a benefit to guys like Koga and Shoji, you know, having that. Because I, I, I still think Tanaka does bring value with his veteran presence, uh, even if he doesn't really bring that much value, you know, on the field. Um, I, I, I think he can still be, I, I think Masahiro Tanaka can be a league average pitcher once he finds his mojo again. I, I, I think that's his ceiling. Ponce, Ponce was, he's thrown a no hitter, but he's been dead average. Um, whether or not, like when it came to the fighters letting him go, I was initially pretty confused. And then I saw they brought back for Hagen. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Cody's going to have a bit of a fire under him, especially because he signed with the fighters' biggest rivals. So um, I, I think we could see a couple great performances out of him uh, this year. But I'm not convinced by this rotation at all. Uh, yeah, I, I feel the same way. Um, I do think Ko- Koze Shoshi and Taki Sayaka can be really good. Uh, I especially like uh, I, I like both of them. I think Hayakawa has had a bit too much problem with giving up bombs uh, in in the dead ball era. That's that's a bit alarming. Uh, but he he did look great in the Australian league. Uh, he he pitched for Samurai Japan uh, this winter, and he looked great there. And yeah, I think he can be a, a different pitcher this year. Uh, Shoji he. He pitched pretty well already last year, and I really like his stuff. I think, I think he he, he can he can get the ball in there. Uh, he can strike out guys, uh, and yeah, he was already pretty solid last year. But I I, I don't know if I would call him an ace because I don't think he he is quite there yet. Uh, Tanaka Tanaka is always. Uh, it has been a bit, a bit of a disappointment uh, since he came back from uh, from America. Uh, he's taken uh, multiple pay cuts since he's come here because he doesn't feel his performance is up to par with his paycheck. And yeah, I think it can be a bit rough for him. I'm not quite sure how he's been this bad. I don't think the stuff is all the way gone, but yeah, you can't count on him to be 20, 2013 Tanaka who goes undefeated and wins 24 games. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be rough. Uh, but uh, Cody Ponce, um, he was all right with with the Fighters last year. I think it was a, a smart acquisition to just shore up the backhand. Right. Yeah, uh, Monster Tanaka, I will say, did get elbow cleaning surgery over the offseason. So maybe he had a lot of uh, discomfort um, and that was what was holding him back. But take a look at the bullpen. You have Norimoto there for some reason. Shota Watanabe, I love, especially because he has that palm ball. I mean, what a unique pitcher uh, dominating with a palm ball. Plus, he throws like in the upper 90s at times. Uh, Seiyu Uchi had, you know, a good uh, rookie season last year. They still have Chao Song. They added Nick Turley. What do you guys think about the bullpen? I think two of these guys should be starters. <laughs> yeah, quite frankly, um, I, I think I, I'd love to see Shota Watanabe move up into the rotation. I think the Norimoto in the bullpen experiment is going to be rather short-lived. Um, I, I think Imai is going to realize that, hey, uh, I, I might want to have this guy back in my rotation. Uh, I think Turley can close. He was decent in, in Hiroshima in high leverage situations. He was actually Hiroshima's best foreign player last year, I believe. No, that was Drew Anderson. But he was um he was up there. He was he was better than both the hitters. Um I I think that um the lack of a of an actual pure closer is gonna hurt them the most. Uh, cause I don't think Norimoto is that guy. I I yeah, so once again, it, it, it's not something that's super remarkable, but it's not the worst in the league. Yeah, uh, it, it really isn't all that terrible when you just look at the surface. Uh, I mean, we you got a lot of guys that can that can be solid setup man with Turley, uh, Watanabe was pretty good, and Chia Hao Sang. I think he's been he, he's been a uh, here a while. I think he's pretty solid as well, but. 
what happens when one of these guys either moves up to the rotation or or just gets hurt. I, I, I'm really not sure of what they do after that. Uh, I think it's a solid bullpen, but I don't think it can carry them to any games, especially now with uh, Yuki Matsui closing. Yeah, losing Yuki Matsui hurts more than it would most teams, I think, because, you know, he was just such a shutdown option and they just don't really have a clear replacement for him, which is why they're sticking their ace there because MPB teams value relievers so much you know, higher than MLB teams. Watanabe and Uchi might very well end up in the rotation if they want to stretch them out. But yeah, I just don't think it's going to be enough. I have this team in last place. Love the bats, so it's you know a little bit unfortunate, but where do you guys have them? I have them in last as well. Um, they have been known to pull miracle runs out of nowhere, but I don't see the devil magic continuing. Like it, they're, I have yet to see uh, enough of a sample size of Emi as a manager to judge how he's going to run this team. Um, and we've seen you know first year managers step up, be smart, and lead their teams to the playoffs. But I don't know enough about Emi to think he's like to predict if he's going to be able to pull that off. So I'm just going to go say the safe bet to say they're going to be last. Yeah, they. They've been uh, finishing further for for like forever, uh, uh, but it's really looking iffy for them this year. Um, I have them finishing last as well. It's just it's just they lost too much on the pitching. They already had had so little, and uh, the lineup can if the lineup doesn't absolutely rake, this can be like a really bad team. They could be really bad. So we're on the same page there yet again. And now we move on to the A-class teams from last year. So it's the SoftBank Hawks, no longer the dynastic juggernauts they were not too long ago, but still a dangerous team that loves to spend, spend, spend. They have a new manager, Hiroki Kokubo, getting the call-up from the farm. And they obviously don't care about their public image, bringing in Roberto Osuna last year, and now Hotaka Yamakawa in a year after he was wrapped up in a scandal. But what do you guys make of the Hawks offseason? Do you think they got that much better? Uh, yeah, they did. Honestly, they had two big bats in Yamakawa and Walker. Um, they they uh, they shored up quite a bit um, because that was that was a big problem with how they just did not have uh, as many boppers as they normally do. You know, you had. Um, mm. Masuda, Matsuda gone. Um, you had uh, Despagne just not be there. Graciel was gone, um, and their their uh, power hitting just wasn't there. And I think they have shorted up. Uh, controversy aside, with Hotaka Yamakawa, and you know, grabbing a guy who you know probably would still be in with the Giants if the CL had a DH uh, and Adam Walker. So. Uh, I like this offense. So yeah, the the Hawks last year combined for one home run combined for their foreign hitters, which is obviously that last in NPB. Uh, I, I think adding Walker, a proven a proven hitter over the past two seasons uh, with the Giants, is going to be huge for them. Probably in a DH role, not very good in the outfield, but he can rake. He 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 has some pop, so. That should help. Um, adding Yamakawa, obviously a bit controversial, uh, but they don't seem to care. Uh, he's going to be a big boost at first base. Uh, I kept looking at how little uh, power they, they keep getting from Akira Nakamura at first. I think he's going to be a huge help there. Uh, and yeah, they got they got a few pitchers, but yeah, honestly, I thought they, were, they would make a play for Bauer. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure they tried, but I don't think he was very interested. They might still. I don't think he seems that committed to coming back to MPB, which is weird. Like he would rather pitch in Mexico than Japan. Let's talk about the hitting. This feels a lot more like a, you know, classic Hawks team in that they have so many superstars. They have Otaka Yamakawa. They have Kensuke Kondo, who evolved so much in the power department last year that he is arguably the number one hitter in MPB at this point. 
400 OBP, 30 home runs, you'll take that any day of the week. Yuki Anagita, all-time great, probably one of the top 10 players of all time. And then Adam Walker, who uh, he has such a volatile profile, never walks, despite his name being Walker. He has one of the lowest walk rates in the league. He strikes out a lot, so he's going to have his ups and downs. But, you know, he is kind of going to possibly serve that role that, you know, Deho Lee or like, uh, Alfredo Despite did for, for many years. And I like Roya Kurihara as well. Year two off a torn ACL is often when they have that big kind of resurgence. So I think the Hawks are really scary in the lineup. Oh, yeah. Um, and especially because you have also like a guy like Richard Sinagawa waiting in the wings, a guy who has that big pot. Like he's, he's won the minor league home run crown last two years. And. This for him not to be up in the lineup every day really speaks to how deep this this Hawks lineup is that they can afford to keep him down. Uh, honestly, I would trade him, but uh, to give him to give him a shot somewhere because there are teams that would give up a lot for him. Um, but as of right now, like I don't see many holes. You got Taise, who's great. Uh, like you've you've got. Hotaka Yamakawa, who's 40 homer man, multiple times over. Ukiyo Shuto, who steals bases like nobody's business. I wouldn't call him uh, the second coming of Hitaka Fukumoto because he can't hit like Fukumoto did, but he's got ungodly speed and amazing defense. Uh, Kondo, best hitter by WRC Plus and NPB last year. Yeah, this this team is good. It, it's so good that they can afford to start Taki Akai. I, I am going to elbow him on the way through this. Poor, poor Kai. Uh, he's he's the only guy on this lineup that I don't see a reasonable path to being a top three player at their position. I mean, they are so loaded, not just in star talent, but in the depth as well. Uh, as you guys mentioned, Yamakawa uh, at first base, I think he's going to be a huge upgrade over Akira Nakamura, who, who's been solid, but he, he just doesn't offer you the profile that they need at first base, which is a uh, a big bopper. The infield is is pretty great as well. Taisei Makihara backed up my uh, Masaki Mimori and and guys like Daiju Nomura, Izami Nomura. I mean, that's depth on depth. That's that's special. And uh, Hiya Kurihara was my sneak sneaky MVP pick last year. It didn't quite work out. He didn't have the best year, but this is a guy that that has hit twenty bombs uh, previously. And like you can see in a swing that this he, he is a, a different player. He can be a really good player at third base. Uh, the outfield is as stacked as anyone in the league, probably the best. Uh, I rated Kensuke Kondo as the the best here in NPB over even guys like Murakami. Uh, his tour to drive line made a huge difference. He went from a guy that yeah he could make a ton of contact. He walked a ton. And now he hits bombs. So, how are you going to stop that? I, I really don't see it. Uh, Ukyo Shuto, super versatile. Uh, probably the fastest fastest player in NPB right now. And, of course, you got all-time great Yuki Anagita just sitting there. Like, he he's not even probably their best player in, in this lineup. How crazy is that? And, yeah, DH, Adam Walker... He should fill in great. It, it length, lengthens the, the lineup. And yeah, I think they're going to give everyone a lot of fists this year. Yeah, I like Masaki Mimori more than Taisei Makihara at second base personally, just because Mimori, in terms of his sprint speed and like time to first, is right up there with Shuto. So that would give them literally the two fastest players in MPB in the same lineup. So I'd like to see Mimori start over Makihara. But other than that, my only complaint with this uh, roster is Kai starting so much. I think they need to give Riku Watanabe more playing time. So moving on to the pitching, that's where you begin to ask questions. This team's rotation, not as bad as Rocket Tech, not even close, but they definitely are uh, a, a little shallow compared to where they were a couple of years ago. Losing Kodai Senga has really, really killed this team. But Kohei Arihara came back last year after a failed MLB stint. Put up good numbers. Levon Moinello is moving into the rotation now. I know a lot of people don't like that move, but I think Moinello is more than capable of doing it. He had a start 
uh, a couple nights ago where he threw over 100 pitches through five innings. So even if he's only given you five or six innings, I could totally see Moinello doing the Kaima Tyra thing where, you know, he's just going to give you a lot of quality starts because he's very efficient, you know, and, and actually he used to be a little bit wild, but in the past couple of years, his walk rate has gone down. So, you know, maybe not going to have the crazy strikeout numbers that he did as a reliever, but I still think he's going to be good. Carter Stewart Jr., this is his time now. Like, he got the extension, contract extension, so he has more time to, you know, kind of find himself in Japan. But I think 2024 is, you know, perfectly where the timeline lines up in terms of him having a breakout season. And then they, you know, just have a bunch of kind of mediocre guys, honestly. Shuta Ishikawa, now Higashihama, older veterans like that, Tsuyoshi Wada. What do you guys think about the rotation? I think it's, you know, it, it, it's it's above average. I mean, Arihara at the ace, as the ace is a little concerning, but he's been he was solid. Uh, Levon Manella moving up to the rotation, although I'm not super bullish on it. I don't think he's going to be Tyra 2.0. It is the right move for him because the closer role has changed to uh, to uh, Roberto Osuna. Um, Carter Stewart Jr. should take that breakout. He's obviously a lot more comfortable now. Uh, he's gotten meaningful time at, at the NPB level. Uh, speaks good Japanese, so he's he's getting himself into uh, the state of mind, like and into the culture. He's not as excluded as other foreign players uh, may be. Uh, Ozaki, his ceiling is amazing. The dude had the best, uh, I believe, he had the, the single best start in um, in NPB last year. So when he's on he's on it's just a question of whether or not he is on uh wada still being in the rotation at as old as he is yeah sure fine you need a guy um it's it's not unremarkable sorry it's sorry it's not remarkable but it's not you know a a, a weakness i would say uh yeah i see a lot of number two number three pitchers in this rotation a lot of guys that you don't consider aces but you you don't consider them like uh below average per se uh Kohei Ariara came came back from getting shelled in the with the Rangers uh he's been all right I, I, he's not an ace he wasn't an ace before uh I, I actually love the transition for Levon Wignalo to the rotation I think it's more than worth the shot uh, if you can actually do it, you get 150 innings out of Wayne Allen instead of 50. I mean, I think that's a huge boost to their rotation. They need more help in the rotation than in the bullpen. Uh, Car Stewart, uh, Don's all there. Uh, he's been up and down mostly. Uh, the, the extension is a very positive sign. He seems he's getting better. He started their, their playoff game uh, last year. Uh, and then... Guys like Shuta Ichikawa, Tomohisa, Ozeki, and Tsuyoshi Wada, I mean, I think these guys are pretty solid as well at, at the backhand, especially Ozeki, who uh, he battled testicular cancer um, a few seasons ago, which um, uh, prayers to him, but he, he's he, he's bounced back, and I think he, he should be really ready to go this year, and he could actually take the, the frontline starter role in this rotation. And yeah, I'm actually pretty all right with this. I think, sure, they could use the, a Bauer-like pitcher, but I think they'll be fine as well. Yeah, uh, with Stewart, like, he, the, the stuff is absolutely there. Like, he throws upper 90s, and he has that buzzsaw 3,000-plus RPM curveball. It's just that the location wasn't great last year. Like, I looked into some of his pitching data, and yeah, the location was not good. So if he can just improve little aspects of this game i do think he's going to have a great year a couple of sleepers i'd like to mention though shinsuke ey uh their second round draft pick he has a big fastball that can get up to like 98 with really high rpm i think he's a sneaky rookie of the year candidate if he gets a chance on the top team and then also koya fuji they tried him in the rotation last year then he got hurt so then they just stuck him back in the bullpen but this is a guy who uh, when he was drafted with the car, it was, you know, unimpressive. Then he had to go to the Shikoku Island League uh, to play independent ball. 
had a huge uh, bounce back with the Hawks two years ago, ended up being one of the best relievers in the league. And so I think if they want to try him out in the rotation again at some point, he could be really good. But for now, I mean, this bullpen, Roberto Osuna, Fuji, Yuki Matsumoto, that's, you know, a pretty strong back end there. Um, once you get down the list, you got guys like Darwin's and Hernandez, who has to kind of be the new Moinello now that Moinello's in the rotation. He's super wild, but I mean, his his stuff is gaudy. Like the strikeout numbers he's put up across all levels, whether it's MLB, the minor leagues, and the farm last year uh, when he came over to the Hawks midway through are pretty special. It's just about finding the strike zone. So what do you guys make of the bullpen? like it. Um, I, I like it a lot. Losing Monello is is a bit of a blow, but uh, putting Fuji back back into the bullpen where he belongs and um, it is a solid move. And I, I'd say Darwin's and Hernandez, I like what I've seen because um, I follow the Red Sox pretty closely in MLB. And when he was on the Sox, he was, uh, you know, not a, quite effectively wild, but a few adjustments away from being effectively wild. So I think that he could, with, with with a little tweaking, he could step up into that back end of that bullpen. Uh, um, I don't see this bullpen being a problem at all. Uh, yeah, me neither. Uh, I think uh, getting Osuna on an extension was was huge for them. They they paid a lot for him, but I think when you got all the money in the world, uh, why not secure an elite closer in any league? Uh, and I think if there's a team that could lose Moinello in the bullpen and be fine, it's the, it's the Hawks. Uh, I mean, Koya Fuji, as you guys mentioned, is pretty nasty out of the bullpen ever since he came to SoftBank. And guys like Yuki Matsumoto and Katsuki Matayoshi, they're proven. They, they can pitch in the 8th, they can pitch in the 7th. Uh, it just brings a lot of depth and like really good quality high-end uh, relievers. I'm pretty bullish on, on their bullpen. Yeah, so where do we think they're going to be finishing? Because I, I'm i not as high on their rotation as I think you guys are. I think it's going to be average to below average apart from Moinello, just because I think guys like Ari Hara are going to have uh, regression, and I'm not quite sure that Stewart's going to be that guy we think he is yet. However, the hitting is great, and they have enough there in the pitching to where I put them in second place. I put him in second as well. Uh, I do think that I do project uh, Stewart as the ace over Moinello. That's just my own gut feeling, not really based on on much, but more so based on more experience starting. But I think that they have the tools. They are they aren't quite the the dominant Hawks of old, but even even the dominant Hawks of old didn't finish first all the time. So they've got everything they need to make another run at the japan series honestly uh yeah uh, i think we're it might be agreeing a bit too much uh, as I, I have them second as well uh <laughs> but but yeah uh, i i just want to see if they can get their dynasty mojo back i mean this is a team that that has kept acquiring like a lot of talent over the past few years and it just hasn't worked out and i think all the pieces are there uh, it, it, they they should be better than the Buffaloes, but I, I have to see it again. I think the I think they still have a lot to prove once again. Yeah, they they do have a new manager, which is a big plus for that oh, one. Yeah, because, yeah um, the Mustache Man was holding them back. Yeah, Mustache Man was was funny, but not good. Now it's going to be the Lote Marines. I think we can all agree they punched above their weight last season. Very few people expected a, a second place finish for them. And even though we are left speculating about Roki Sasaki's MLB posting situation, that was what uh, we talked about all off season. What we know definitively is that he is on the Marines this season. And they also made quite a few other moves, including re-signing home run champ uh, Gregory Polanco, which I think is huge. Um, what do you? How do you rate Lote's off season? I rate it pretty well. Uh, I think uh, Jimmy Cordero, as as crappy of a person as he is, uh, would be is a good bullpen arm. Uh, Ito, you know, the defensive wizard, uh, is a solid pickup in the Rule Five draft. We'll see if he can get his bat going in a bit more of a hitter's park. 
Uh, Neftali Soto, her veteran presence at first base, is just, um, just is just honestly a very good pickup. I, I know it made sense. It made a lot of sense for Yokohama to let him go, um, but him, um, you know, not moving too far definitely helps. Uh, I don't like them losing Luis Castillo though. Uh, that is a blow because I like I, I'm I'm pretty sure you remember Cosmo when I. When I when they first signed Castillo, that was a coup. Can't have shit in Detroit. That was he was he was very good on the ti- on the, on the Detroit Tigers, and to have him go to to uh, NPB was a big loss on their part. I think it is going to be a, a blow that they lose him, especially for their rotation depth. But we'll see how this goes. Really. Uh yeah, uh, I think they had a very interesting offseason. They they added a lot, but they also subtracted a lot. Uh, just looking at the bullpen first, uh, getting uh, getting rid of, well, not getting rid of, but letting them go, Castillo and Perdomo, were actually pretty huge for them. Uh, I think uh, Cordero is a great signing, despite all the off the field concerns. But after that, I don't think they added a, a second guy that can replace them, at least on the foreigner side. I mean, James Dykstra, they announced that signing. I was a bit puzzled as he had pitched about 20 innings in five years and barely pitched in the delay. I was very, very uh, puzzled by that. I I didn't really understand it, but uh, he's actually shown a a decent amount of stuff uh, this spring, so we shall see. I think adding Soto is a big upgrade over what they had in Mike Brasso who did basically nothing last year they just plugged him in the middle of the season and it, it just didn't ban out adding adding Soto uh, playing him at first probably sp- splitting some time with uh, Yasuda I think I think he'll be a, a very solid platoon there and yeah they, they did solid in the draft they got a hitter uh, as most teams didn't uh, Q2 weather and uh, yeah, I think they had a, an interesting offseason. I, I'm not sure if I would call them an upgrade because Castillo and Perdomo were that good. But yeah. Yeah, I follow the kind of AAA to MLB, like the tweener scene pretty closely just because a lot of those guys do end up in MLB or in MPB rather. Uh, James Dykstra, a guy I had never heard of. And it was just like, what? But he does look pretty good so far in spring training, so maybe they just have, you know, scouts that identified him. He'll definitely be interesting to see. I like that they drafted uh, Kyuta Ueda in the first round because at first they wanted Rintaro Sasaki, but then Rintaro Sasaki went to uh, Stanford. So then they wanted Ryuki Watarai, and then they lost the lottery for him. So then they just, you know, kept going down the list. I think they lost three lotteries. But then they finally end up with Ueda, who I think profiles the most similarly to Wataray out of all the guys from last year's draft because left-handed hitter, versatile defensively, and, you know, kind of uh, a, a compact swing who, who should be able to, you know, post a fairly high average, but sneaky power, like 10 to 15 homers in there. So we'll see where Ueda plays because the infield is so solidified at this point. He's probably going to end up in left field or a bench roll early on, but um, this team's offense is certainly interesting. They added Soto, as you guys mentioned, who uh, now forms a, a platoon, I suppose, with Hisanori Yasuda. Although, you know, Shogo Nakamura, who got moved to third base, I'm not really confident in his bat anymore. So I think Yasuda is going to end up back at third. But they shuffled around the infield a little bit. You know, Yudai Fujioka had some. Uh, fielding problems at shortstop, so he moves he moves over the second. Atsuki Tomasugi and Kenta Chatani now have to uh, duke it out for the shortstop job. And then the outfield is kind of this weird blend of veterans like Hiromi Oka plus uh, Katsuya Kakunaka. I guess you can you know Takashi Ogino when he's actually healthy, which isn't very often, but when he is, you have you know really good. Uh, all-around player there as well. But then they have, like, these young guys. Koki Yamaguchi, great hitter, not a, not a great fielder. Koshiro Wada, super fast. How's the bat going to play over a larger sample size? Akito Takabe, stolen base title two years ago, missed all of 2023 uh, with thoracic outlet syndrome, which is a pretty, you know, hard injury to come back from. Kyoto Fujiwara, I'm not that high on, plus he is injured right now, but 
Uh, what do you make about this team's offense? Confusing um, to me. Like it's like you, you see the pieces, you see the vision, you just don't see how it all comes together. Uh, quite frankly, um, <laughs> yeah, Kyoto Oeda. We have Ryuki Watarai at home, um, but um, I, I don't see him displacing Kakanaka, uh, a multi-time ban- at like Kakanaka has got a couple of batting titles under his belt, I believe. I may be wrong. I don't quite see him knocking down Kakanaka just yet, but um, I also see I, I see like a lot of interchangeability, a lot of ways to tune this lineup. Uh, to face different teams, it may not be a great lineup overall. You're you're still uh, leaning heavy on Soto and Polanco for power, but um, I I don't I don't hate it. I I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's it's very middle of the pack for me. Uh, yeah, the Mar- Marines lineup is is really a a question mark between interesting young guys, guys that haven't played a lot, but. They've been good when they play, and just uh, resurging veterans while other guys are, are falling apart. I mean, I look at guys like um, Hiromiyoka, uh, who he just he, he played great last year. I was I, I did not see really that coming. Uh, One thirty seven WRC plus. Uh, I think he should be a regular in the outfield this year. Uh, I I love Koki Yamaguchi. I think he he's shown pretty good power. Uh, and very consistent from the right-handed side of the plate. Uh, bringing back Polanco was massive. I mean, this is a guy that, although he doesn't offer a ton besides his pure pop, I mean, in the field, I, I, I'm not sure he's going to play much there. I saw him play uh, a bit today in left field. He made some nice catches, but I'm not sure how much of that is going to be a part of their off season uh, of their season. And yeah, it, the the infield is also a bit iffy. Fujioka stepped up last year and played well. Uh, Yasuda, I feel like we've been talking about his breakout for like forever. Uh, I thought he was gonna break out last year. Uh, I know you, he was on your breakout uh, list before Yuri. And yeah, uh, he went to drive line. I know people are optimistic, but we're gonna have to see it first. And yeah, it's a lot of these guys could be solid, uh, but I don't see an elite hit, an elite hitter in this lineup, and that's a bit concerning when when it gets tough. Because what happens if these guys don't hit all all hit their ceiling like they did last season? Yeah, yeah with Polanco playing a little bit of outfield, I think they are doing that strategically just so he gets reps because I think. With Takabe trying to come back from that injury, I don't think he's ready to play center field again. So they might want to DH Takabe, which is a little odd because he's such a, you know, kind of a speedy slap hitter type that you don't really see him as like a traditional DH, but they might want to have more at bats for Takabe and Kakunaka, maybe even Soto at, at the DH spot. Polanco, you know, for as good as he was last year, like still wasn't like an 800 OPS guy, which. You know, it's fine because MPB is in a dead ball era. High 700s OPS is still good, but he's not like a world beater. Um, and he's very hot and cold. So we'll see. Like, I think in an ideal world, like guys like Kakunaka and Oka would be platooning a lot more. But um, they, 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 they have a lot of injuries in the outfield every year, I feel like. Now we move on to the starting rotation, though. And immediately when I see this team's rotation, I think, wow, this is top heavy. Because Roki Sasaki, Atsuki Taniichi, those two are going to strike out a lot of hitters. Roki Sasaki has been a little bit slow this spring. Uh, he's actually kind of struggling, but, you know, I think he'll be fine. I mean, come on, it's Roki Sasaki. Atsuki Taniichi competed for Yoshinobu Yamamoto for the strikeout title for a long time last year. Uh, great to see him, you know, having a great year after... Coming off Tommy John, Yuji Nishino moved back into the rotation after an extended stint in the bullpen, and he actually put up really good numbers. We'll see if you know that can stick for another year. But then you get to the back end of the rotation, and I begin to ask questions. So what do you guys think about this team's rotation? Uh, like you said, very top-heavy. Their top three 
Um, you could make the argument, and it's the best top three in the league now. It's their bottom. Like uh, Ojima, I think Ojima is a little better than people are giving him credit for. Mercedes will give you innings. If anything, he is like he is, uh, as as Bailey would put it, the Chad innings eater. Uh, um, Shinsuke Nakamura and Manabu Mima are, are kind of the question mark. I, I don't see Junior Fernandez cracking this rotation. I think James Dykstra could, but that'd be more of in a CC Mercedes role as the as the innings eater. So, um, yeah, I mean, like three days out of the week, you're gonna have a very good a very good team. Yeah, uh, one day you may get a question mark. Two days you're just gonna get you know average production at best. So it it really comes down to how good can that top three be and that's not necessarily sustainable i don't think right uh yeah i think they're gonna have to really unleash roki this year to really go far uh if they want to go somewhere no more innings limit no more pitch counts he wants to leave he's got to prove himself a bit let him pitch <clears throat> let him pitch because th- they're gonna need them it's roki sasaki and the boys uh, Atsuki Taniishi also proved himself last year. Great strikeout stuff. He came came a bit out of nowhere after a couple of injuries. Uh, Yuji Nishino, they just had these guys step up, and it's really what got them to second place. They were very scrappy. Uh, none of these guys on paper looked that good, but they really proved themselves last year. Uh, Yuji Nishino, Kazuya Jima, I'm actually pretty pretty solid on. I think he's gonna be fine. Um. Uh, and same with CC Mercedes. Uh, he was pretty okay with the Giants uh, in his tenure. Uh, always low for easy RA and a hitter-friendly ballpark. He wasn't great last year adjusting to a new team, but I think he'll be fine. He has been one of the best foreign starters, uh, not just in terms of war, but in terms of ERA over the last few years, which is admittedly not saying much considering how bare the foreign talent has been. And yeah, I have a couple questions. Um... Uh, if somebody gets hurt, though, I mean, Manabu Miba, uh, he's probably a bit washed. Uh, he he can still throw a bit, but yeah, it's it's not looking great. And after him, it, it, it can be rough. It can be rough. I like Hikaru Otani, honestly, because they drafted him in the second round when he was expected to be more like a fourth or fifth rounder. Thing is, he was a reliever with the Toyama Thunderbirds, really high strikeout rate, but they're stretching him out as a starter. So if he cracks the rotation, I do think he has the stuff to be good. Like, I don't know how he's going to play up when you when you scale him up as a starter, like, right away. Like, here you are in the pros, now you have to start. But definitely an intriguing piece there. One thing I do want to get your guys' thoughts on, though, is Roki Sasaki. Career high in innings so far is 129 and a third. The Marines have said they're going to load manage him again this year. We don't really know what that means specifically, but... I don't think he's going to be fully unleashed as we hope. Plus, obviously has that, you know, oblique issue that still might be nagging him. You know, we pray that he's not going to have arm trouble. Do you guys think he can set a career high in innings or is he going to be around that like 90 to 120 mark again? I think he's there. I think they're going to let him get a qualified season uh, Uh, under him because I think if if he looks good enough to go, and they start load managing him a little heavy, it's going to look a little sus. Uh, especially with the whole off-season, oh, he hasn't proven himself, he hasn't even thrown a qualified season. If they actively prevent him from throwing a qualified season, that's a little... Yeah. Um, I yeah, I don't think he's going to get posted this off-season like a lot of people seem to think. Um, I think that uh, at the end of the day, he and the Marines both know they stand to gain a lot more by sticking together for a couple more years. Um, because it's just it, it's just at a point where I I looked at the whole thing and the the more I looked at the the reporting surrounding it the sketchier it got because like apparently it was from one executive the winter meetings and talking to a guy from Spawnichi and the guy Spawnichi ran with it like it was fact and it created a whole mess I. I like I know Jim and I got into a bit of a spat about the whole thing with his with the fact that he has an agent being the reason why it took so long for him to sign um but uh I hated the clause idea too if he had the clause he'd be gone already um 
I, I think that I think that we're going to see Sasaki get qualified. I don't think he's going to get the ERA title. Um, as as a bit of a, as wild of a statement as that is, because we have seen him take a step back this year, and I do think he's going. And I do think we're going to see the balls get a little bit more juiced, uh, considering a few of the home runs I've seen these past couple days. I think they are experimenting. So, yeah, I, I, I think he goes for a qualified season. Yeah, um, I think I think I agree with you. Um, I think if he doesn't get a qualified season, it's because of Sasaki and him getting hurt than the, the Marines themselves. I think they're. I think they're probably just a bit bluffing to keep him a bit in check. Uh, I'm sure he wants to get out there and and pitch, but yeah, it's 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 an odd situation. I think there's there's a bit of uh, when there's smoke, there is fire. Uh, I don't know if, if I'm using that term correctly, but I think there's definitely something to be said about him being posted early. But it would just be such a blow to. Not not only um, the Marines in terms of what they can get for, for his posting, but Sasaki itself because he just saw Yamamoto get 300 plus million by wait, waiting until he's 25 and getting a massive deal. Like if if he wants to play it smart and just get as much money as possible, he just has to wait a few more seasons and and he's gone and, and everyone's happy there. But it's it seems that. He, he might not be totally motivated by that. He might just want to make the majors next year, but I don't know if, if that would be the right choice. And I, I think I don't think he, he's quite ready yet. I think he's got to he's got to throw a, 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 a least 140 plus innings in a season, especially in a in a six man rotation. I mean, he's got to be more consistent. Yeah. Last point I'll make about this rookie thing because you know I, I, we got to move on, but. Um, based on, you know, his answers he gave in the press conference, plus like other reporting that I've seen, like not just speculative reporting, but verified reporting, I do think he asked to be posted this past off season. That's the conclusion that I've come to because there were a lot of different versions of the story going around. But the one that seems most plausible to me is, and you Darvish has actually talked about this in terms of how MPB front offices operate. MPB has a lot of verbal agreements, not as many sort of clauses in quotation marks. But I do think Roki asked to be, you know, posted when he was drafted, as in, if I asked to be posted at any time, would you guys agree to that? And I think he asked with the same timing as Yamamoto last year, but they denied him, which shows you that, yeah, the Marines do have that kind of leverage. But then, I mean, he was holding out until two days before camp. So is that a contract thing with his agent? Sure, possibly, but I do think there's something to the fact that he feels a little deceived by his team, and I think he definitely wants to pitch an MLB next year. Whether or not the Marines actually agree to that, uh, because it doesn't make any financial sense for them to do it, it would completely be based on just trying to uphold image of, you know, we're going to actually abide by what our player wants. That's basically their only incentive to do it, unless they obviously change the posting protocol, but... Yeah, I'm not so sure. I really, really pray that we get 140 plus innings from Roki Sasaki because that would be possibly one of the best pitching seasons we've seen in MPB history. Not even just like the last decade or so, but certainly um, we've seen great seasons. We've seen Masahiro Tanaka undefeated. We've seen Yoshinobu Yamamoto's three straight triple crowns. Uh, it's going to be right up there. Now, talking about the bullpen, it's okay. Like, it's a lot of these bullpens we've talked about so far are just like they're not anything to write home about but they're not bad now Yamasuda I do think is you know going to be on his way out pretty soon I like Rikuto Yokoyama a lot sidearm throws gas he's kind of like Taisei for the Giants Jimmy Cordero we mentioned before Tagahiro Nishimura had a really nice bounce back after switching teams last year Daiki Iwashita is a guy I actually quite like Hirokazu Samamura was surprisingly horrible last year like for a guy that was not bad at all with the Red Sox for two seasons. A little bit inconsistent, albeit. Um, he wasn't good, so maybe he can, you know, be better this year. But what do you make of the bullpen? Um, no, no real issues, honestly. Um, I, I do think while well, Masuda may be on his way out, he is still one of the better closers in the league. I think Jimmy Cordero is going to be a great high leverage arm. And as for everyone else, I, I don't 
see Sawamura being as bad as he was last year, but I do see him having a much reduced role. I think this team has a decent bullpen. Yeah, like it, it, it's like everything else, quite frankly. The, the, the top end is great. The bottom end is... is e- yeah, it's it's one, another one of those bullpens where you're not uh, enjoy about it, but it's not really all that bad either. Uh, Masuda, he's been their closer for most of his time until Osuna came and, well, uh, went away pretty quickly. Uh, Cordero offers like an MLB uh, capable pitcher just right out the gate. He should probably uh, be their setup. I'm pretty high on uh, Yokoyama as well. I think he has a lot of potential. He had an ERA in the fives last year, but I don't, I don't think that reflects his talent. I think he's he's ready for a, a big breakout. And and yeah, uh, Daiki Washita, he shown he shown a bit uh, in the last few years. Tw- I believe 27, 27 year old, and can show something. Keske Salada was all right last year as well. And then you got Hirokazu Sawamura, who, yeah, it, it was weird. It was weird how bad he was last year. Uh, obviously, with uh, relievers, it's just such a small sample size that you can't really judge them just off one year. But, yeah, it was odd how much he got hit around. He, he was actually rated among most statistics as the worst, like, reliever in, in all of NPB. So that was a bit shocking. Yeah, definitely. So... Where do we see this team finishing? They were surprisingly good last year. They do kind of have a tendency, this franchise, of underperforming in the year immediately following them overperforming. I have them in fourth, but I, I could see them finishing like as high as second, as low as fifth. Uh, how about you guys? I seem fourth, could be third on a good day. It really just kind of depends on how uh, how everything clicks together, how Yoshi manages the team. I don't really see them as championship contenders, but A, they could make the first round of the playoffs if they want to. Yeah, I have them in third, uh, just scraping into the playoffs as as a distant third. Um, I just think this team has a lot of um, solid, a lot of proven, and uh, I don't see like major holes in them. I, I think they're... They played really well last year, much better than anyone anticipated. And uh, yeah, I, I just think they got a bit more veteran leadership than uh, teams like the the Fighters, who still have to take that jump, t- take that next jump. All right, finishing up the PL, it is of course the Oryx Buffaloes who will be attempting a four peak this season. At least when it comes to Lake Pennants, they're only one for three so far in the Japan series. But the big question is. They lost Masataka Yoshida last last year, uh, and they were fine. But will they survive after losing Yoshinobu Yamamoto to the Dodgers, which at least included a nice fifty million dollar posting fee to soften the blow? Uh, I think you know most people would be happy to get fifty million dollars in return. But what do you guys think? What do you make of Yamamoto leaving first off, um, and how big of an impact is that going to make? And how about some of the other moves they made? I think Yamamoto leaving is a blow, but it's not as big of a blow as other generational talents leaving. Uh, It's not like when Masahiro Tanaka left and they lost two aces in three years and the Eagles completely cratered. Not like when the fighters lost lost Yu Darvish and everything just kind of got shaky. Um, Although they did uh, win the pennant that year. But uh, I do think that... Um, bringing in guys like Luis Castillo does soften the blow. He's not going to be anywhere near as good. But when you when you have a number two starter that would be the ace of like two thirds of these teams, you know, it's it it's not gonna hurt as much, you know. Uh, yeah, I agree. If if there's a team that can afford, you can never afford, but can tolerate losing. Probably one of the best pitchers in the world. It's it's the Buffaloes right now. Uh, their pitching depth is crazy, and I love how they've been they've been posting guys. They've been getting uh, a, a solid uh, pay cut from MLB clubs, and they're reinvesting in their squad. Last year they did it with Tomoya Mori, 
this year they did it with Real Mani Chicago, and I think that's going to be another huge step into keeping them at the top. Uh, in terms of the bullpen, I, I just love what they did bringing Castillo in. Uh, so that that was a huge get. Andres Machado, uh, also very capable MLB reliever, very good stuff. And Anderson Espinosa was a big time prospect a couple years ago. Hasn't done much, but why not take a chance on it? Um, Oryx Pitching Lab, gonna Oryx Pitching Lab. I mean, they brought in Kosei Yoshida and Hiroshi Suzuki as well. These are two guys who were formerly first round picks Yoshida for Nippon Ham, Suzuki for Chinichi. They haven't had much success with those teams, but do I think the Buffaloes can get the most out of them? Yes, I do. Plus, as you mentioned, they're not just pocketing the money that they get from the likes of Macho Man and uh, Yamamoto. They reinvested into the team. So now they bring in Roman Ishikawa, who was, you know, one of the better pure hitters in the Central League for the better part of the last decade. Uh, and he really is going to be shoring up that outfield. So we take a look at the overall lineup. Uh, they have Yuma Tongu at first base, who, you know, uh, we have this running joke of, I believe in Yuma Tongu supremacy, more Yuma Tongu's stonks, please, because Yuma Tongu is such a fun player to watch and super talented. I think he's going to do more in the power department. I doubt he wins another batting title in his career because that is not really what his game is, but um, super high fly ball rate as well. But I see him as a guy that could easily hit, you know, 25 home runs. Um, Kotaro Kuribayashi is getting better every year. Defensively, still kind of shaky, but I, I really believe in the bat. Uh, and then you look at that outfield, Roman Ishikawa, Keita Nakagawa, plus, you know, right field, I still think is going to be up in the air, is Yutaro Sugimoto, who has had a couple of down years now. Can he get back to that um, home run crown form that he was back in 2021? They signed Cody Thomas, so he could be an option out there. Uh, Tomi Omori was actually playing outfield in the Japan Series last year. I still think he's going to primarily be DH slash catcher, but he's an additional guy they could stick in right field if they feel like it. This is a really well-rounded team. What do you guys make of their offense? And the only hole is Yuma Mune. Yeah. Really. And even then, Yuma Mune hits fastballs extremely well. So if you try and pump heat to Mune, he'll crush you. So I... Wow. You know, I, I do think that Sugimoto is gonna fade to to Thomas, but honestly, this is a team that you know, and with, with Thomas and Cedeno at least coming off the bench, that's still two very capable hitters coming off the bench. You know, I you have a guy with batting title potential in Yumitongu. I don't think he's not going to win another one. I think he definitely could. I won't go out and say like humor triple crown, you know, but like he is. Scary, scary good. Tommy Amori is scary, scary good, and the rest of the lineup is no pushover. Um, so, like, damn, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. When Yuma Mone is your like hole in the lineup, I think you are doing pretty well. I mean, this is a, a guy that that has been pretty solid. I mean, he didn't have a great year last year, but if that if that's your hole, then you're doing pretty well. I mean. We got we got Tomoya Mori. I, I believe he should probably catch more, but I understand why they DH and and put him in right field. They just want his bat in the lineup. Uh, got a great backup catcher and Kenny Wakatsuki, who's gonna start a lot of games. He actually he actually started more games than Mori last year uh, at catcher. Uh, we do believe in Yuma Tongo supremacy. I think there is more power there that that he can show. Uh, yeah, the average is probably not going to be quite there, but I think there's a great player in there every day. Uh, second base, I think that's where their hole is. They have a lot of uh, guys that they tried to fill in last year. Uh, I don't think Marin Gonzalez is exactly the answer. I think he's more suited for that utility role that he did uh, mostly with the Astros. But yeah, this is just a stacked lineup. Uh, not as stacked as the Hawks, but still one of the best. And uh, the outfield, um, Ryoma Nishikawa, I think, was probably the Carps' best player, best hitter, uh, after Sei Suzuki left. 
Keren Nakagawa is on the rise. I think he's going to be a, a solidly above average hitter once again. And I am not very high on Yutaro Sigamoto, but he, he hits bombs. And that's that's good enough for me, at, at least in a in a smaller, uh, in a lower spot in the lineup. Manager Nakajima loves to move pieces around. He likes to platoon. Like, them going up against Hanshin last year was such an interesting, like, juxtaposition of styles because Okada for Hanshin rolls out the same exact lineup every day. Whereas I think the Buffaloes, you know, in 143 games last year, they had at least like 130 different lineups. And second base, you know, Margo, Marwin Gonzalez actually surprised me last year, p- pleasantly surprised me because, you know, He's been so wrapped up in that Astros cheating scandal that, and he's old, like one of the older foreigners to come into NPV in recent years that I didn't think he had anything left in the tank. But um, even though he wasn't like absolutely destroying the baseball, like he had some big clutch moments, both offensively and defensively, very strong arm um, as as well. So they kind of like him at uh, one of these kind of infield positions just so they can help out somebody like Kotaro Kuribayashi, who's a little bit, you know, less, uh, a little bit limited defensively. Same with Mune, who has the reputation of being, you know, elite in Japan. But if you look at the defensive metrics, he's not great. And, but, you know, if, if Gonzalez isn't the answer at second base, they have Tomi Onoguchi, who had one of the the highest hard hit rates on the farm last year. They have Ryo Ota. They brought in Taishi Hiraoka last year, midway through in a trade with, with Yomiuri. So they have plenty of options. Uh, I think the Buffalo's offense is going to be, you know, one of the best in the league. Then you get to the pitching, and yes, Yoshinobu Yamamoto is not at the top anymore, but guess what? You still have Hiroya Miyagi, and you still have Shinpei Yamashita. Those two, I would say, is the best one-two punch in MPV. They're both top five MPV pitchers in my eyes. Um, and then Kohei Azuma came out of nowhere last year, was fantastic down the stretch. Um, Daiki Tajima has always just kind of been in the shadow of some of these other guys, but he's a former first-round pick who's fine. I love uh, Ryohei Sotani, one of my top prospects in all of MPB. Taisuke Yamaoka, maybe he moves back into the rotation full-time after he got uh, brought into uh, the bullpen last year. And other than that, I mean, they just have so many other options as well. Like, you know, we were talking about Luis Castillo. He could be a swingman. Ren Mukunoki threw 8.2 no hit innings or perfect innings was it like in, in it his no it was no hit as a rookie no hit innings, he got, but he got stamped yeah. oh yeah last day yeah. yeah so he had tommy john last year but he's gonna be back here was kiosuke saito another like really high-end prospect like man this this team's pitching is so nutty just utterly dominant and i look at this team and i just kind of go how in the what the how in the what in the what like they are, they remind me a lot from a historical context. The Honky Braves of the late seventies, honestly, and uh, they don't have as much success as the Honky Braves of the late seventies. But then again, they're not playing. Well, they're not playing like uh, an old ass lineup like the Giants, who they beat twice. Um, but like, yeah, this team is this team is honestly a Japan series contender with everything even we don't even have to look at the bullpen yet and you can just say like yeah this is the first place team i i thought about having uh the hawks as the front runners in the pacific league but then when you look at at this rotation it's just like oh they got two of the best pitchers in npb two two top three guys probably and uh hiroya miyagi and shupaita yamashita I mean, this is this is insane how how they lose yamamoto and they still have probably the best rotation in, in NPB. It's it's crazy. I mean, uh, when you look past uh, guys like that, which is hard to, um, I think Taisuke Yamaoka is probably one of the most underrated guys in the last few years. He hasn't thrown over 130 innings uh, since, uh, since 2019. Uh, he strikes out a lot of people. He doesn't walk a ton. I think this is a guy that could really step up and be almost as good as as the those other two uh asma stepped up uh in the second half last year more of a bulky guy and he pitched to a i believe low two zra and yeah daiki tajima has been good forever Ryue sotani a big time prospect and even in the 
when it comes to depth, I mean, last year the Buffalo started the season running what an eight man rotation. Like who who does that? Who does that? And it worked. So yeah, they, they have crazy depth as well. I really don't see a way this rotation is an elite. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as much as I like Roki Sasaki, I do think Shunpei Tayamashita is my favorite pitcher to watch in Japan right now. Um, when I was covering the Japan versus Europe series, uh, he was standing right next to me, and the first thing I think is like, this guy is jacked, and he's put on like a couple more pounds over the offseason as well. So he's super strong. Um, I think he probably, if he has like future MLB aspirations, he probably needs to add kind of a horizontal pitch, slider, sweeper, cutter, something like that. But right now, I mean, mid to upper 90s fastball, hammer curveball in the upper 70s, and then devastating fork ball, which, you know, the Oryx organization taught him that because he didn't have that pitch back in high school. And with him and Miyagi, it's just like these guys are one one or two years removed from high school. They just break out and they just like instantly become the best pitcher in MPB. It's kind of crazy. Uh, the Oryx pitching lab is no joke. I don't know what they're feeding these guys, but they are able to make aces grow on trees. And it also carries over into their bullpen because um, Soichiro Yamazaki, Yuki Udagawa, these two guys are elite. Udagawa a little bit more wild, but I mean, both of these guys throw can throw a hundred. Um, ton of strikeout upside there. They have Yoshihisa Hirano and Motoki Higa, who are both 40-ish years old, but they're still getting the job done, at least in terms of run prevention. They bring in another hard thrower like Andres Machado. Like I, I was really sad they didn't keep Jacob Waggis back, but Machado's fine, I think. Shota Abe, just a couple of years ago, had a sub-1 ERA. Um, I have I have no qualms with this team's bullpen. Not at all. Yeah. It, it's not the 2022 thing where when she got to the seventh inning, it was over. But, um, like, yeah. This, this... Once again, no major holes. You have great high leverage arms. You have solid low leverage arms. This team will, like, yeah, this team can hold the lead and knows how to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just another one of those things where it's a team that that's so complete, so deep, especially on the pitching. It's just crazy. I mean, we didn't even mention them losing Sachiya Yamasaki, which was he was getting uh, offers from half the league, it seemed, and yeah, they just lost him. And we we didn't even notice it almost. Uh, but yeah, this bullpen, it's just a lot of good pieces. And then a couple of, like high upside guys, you know, the Gawa and Yamasaki, two guys that, that played with Samurai Japan in their WBC run. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be just fine. I don't think they're going to have any problems closing games. Hirano's been there. He's done that. He's going to be fine closing. Machado's a great ad. And yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's they should be fine, especially when when they can churn out so many guys. If if these guys falter, it, they're gonna be great. I, I was I was just gonna imagine if there's like an Instagram comment section that's just like Jesus Christ, stop glazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I've been accused of being a an Oryx glazer in the past, but I don't mind it because like you were saying with. Sachi Yamasaki. No, I totally forgot they lost Sachi Yamasaki because he doesn't make a dent in this team's pitching at all. Um, and yeah. they have so many Yamas, right? So Ichiro Yamazaki, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Jinbeite Yamashita, Nobuyoshi Yamada. It's just like, well, there's so many Yamas that I, I almost forget about him. But I think... The mountain men good. Yeah, mountain men good. But I think we've uh, spoken so positively about this team that we already know where everyone's going to put them. Uh, it's first place, yeah. right? For- yep. First place, yep. yeah, it it's just complete. Like it, it's a complete team. Yeah. Do you think this is you know? I mean, what defines like an era or a dynasty? Like, is is this Oryx Buffalo's team already approaching that status? I mean, kind of like the the lack of championships does hurt that perception. But I see this a lot, like. People forget how good, uh, when they were called the Honky Braves, how good they were in the late 60s. Because they just they just won, like, I think, like, uh, six out of seven pennants in the late 60s, early 70s. They were that good. Like, 
people do remember those teams as insanely good, just not as good as the V9, you know? So, yeah, like, it's, quite frankly, this team will be remembered as utterly freaking dominant in the Pacific League. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, they're on, what, four straight PLs? This this would be their fourth straight PL pennant, you know? Yeah, this would be their fourth straight, yeah. It's just... It's crazy how how they turned around the 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 team. I mean, th- this was a perennial loser not too long ago, uh, and they just figured stuff out. And now they have a formula for winning. They're gonna pitch. They're gonna get solid hitters, and it, it's just hard to beat. I mean, even teams with just unlimited money like the Hawks can't copy what they're doing. Uh, so it, yeah, help that Oryx is very good with their money as well, considering that's kind of their business. Mm, right, right, and yeah, they've been very shrewd, and they, they've they've allocated their resources very well. 